friends, welcome back. I'm Mark Baker, and in today's program, we're going to continue talking about the subject, Demonstrating the Kingdom. If you are a Christian, did you know that God has called you to demonstrate his power to the unsaved world? You're to walk at a level that is much different than your unsaved neighbors, your unsaved family members. It is not just words that we're speaking, but they should see a difference because we should be demonstrating the power. And this is what we've been talking about in the previous few broadcasts. So today we're going to continue talking about that. And in the last program, we took a look at the two sides of our nature. We looked at Galatians chapter 5 and saw that the flesh and the spirit war against each other. We are born-again creatures. We have been made new creations in Christ Jesus. We see this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. If you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, you are a brand new creature. Your spirit has been recreated. But then we saw in the last program in Romans chapter 8 that we're still waiting for the redemption of our body. So in Galatians 5, we saw the fruit of the born-again spirit that's already in our spirits, love, joy, peace, so on and so forth. But then we also looked at the, you know, the works of the flesh, the works of the unredeemed flesh. Many people struggle with this battle between their flesh and their spirit. I've heard people say, well, if you're doing that, it must be because you have a demon. But when you look at that list, lasciviousness, you know, drunkenness, so on and so forth, these are works of the unredeemed flesh. I've said in the series that the soul is sort of, I, I used an illustration a couple of programs ago, it's sort of like a roundhouse that a train goes into. When the train comes in, goes into the roundhouse, it, it will turn to put the train either one direction or the other. We can be feeding our soul, which consists of our mind, will, intellect, and emotions, the incorruptible seed of God's word, focusing on God's kingdom, or we can be feeding it the corruptible seed of this word, world. How do we feed it the corruptible seed of this world? We feed it by feeding into it. Things like our news programs, you know, looking at headlines constantly. We look at our sitcoms. We There's so many distractions, social media, so many things pulling our attention outward. If you are going to be demonstrated in the kingdom of God, you are going to have to learn how to operate from your spirit. These are things we're talking about because you will not demonstrate the kingdom until you first learn how to operate from your spirit. So today we're going to kind of pivot, continue going in this direction, but I want to look at basically ways we can tune ourselves to the spiritual realm. One of them is by meditating upon the Word day and night. That is why it's so important to be looking at the Word every day, be spending time in fellowship. We're going to look at a couple other ways, but let's go and get started. Just set a foundation in Mark chapter 16, and then we're going to turn over to Romans chapter 8. If you have it, if you don't have your Bible, I encourage you to grab it, look at it, put your eyes on Scripture. It really will help you to receive what the Holy Spirit has for you by giving honor to the written Word of God. Once again, and if you've listened to these programs for any my time, you've heard me say it, the written Bible that we hold in our hands is a perfect representation of the Word of God. It does not become the Word of God to you, though, until you get it off the pages and into your soul. Paul you know, describes this process in Romans chapter 12, and verse 2, as the renewing of the mind. So here in Mark chapter 16, beginning in verse 15, Jesus is last words to his disciples before ascending to the Father. Notice what he says. He said unto them, Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they will speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven, and sat on the right hand of the God. They went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. There's a couple of things I want you to notice here that are, we, that are important for our study. We could probably do a whole series just on this passage of Scripture. But the first thing I want you to notice in verse 17, notice what he says. 
these signs shall follow them that believe. Now, I've gone to all kinds of seminars and meetings and heard people talk about miraculous and things we can do to, you know, to have the miraculous demonstration of the power of God. But notice Jesus only gave us one qualification. These signs will follow them that believe. What are they believing? They are believing the gospel message. So the question we have to ask, and it's a question I ask myself, if we are not seeing signs following the preaching that we are doing, does that mean we are not preaching the same gospel message the disciples preached? Because notice in the last verse, Mark chapter 16, it says in verse 20, they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. You notice in this verse, in verse 20, he did not confirm the disciples. He did not confirm their ministry. He did not cons confirm their sermons. He confirmed his word that they were releasing with their lips. There's a vast difference between preaching messages that you've studied and worked and learned, you know, knowledge that you've acquired is what I call it, acquired knowledge, you know, where you put in the effort, you've read the commentaries and things like that. And then there's a vast difference between that, which is where, unfortunately, I believe far too many ministers sit. We preach from our soul. But if you want to see God confirming the word as he confirmed the disciples' word, you're going to have to learn how to minister from your spirit. You might say, well, Brother Mark, I'm not called into the ministry. It doesn't matter. He, the only qualification we saw in Mark chapter 16, if you remember, was these signs will follow them that believe. One of the best definitions of a belief, and the Holy Spirit kind of expanded it for me over the years as I meditated on it, but was is that it's a firm persuasion based upon knowledge gained in relationship. If you've watched these programs for any amount of time, then you know that you've heard me say, you cannot develop any higher level of intimacy with the Word than you have with the Word of God. And the reverse is also true. You cannot develop a higher level of intimacy with the Holy Spirit than you have with the Word of God. The Word and the Spirit working together. The Word and the Spirit working together. The reason we only have acquired knowledge is because we've made meditation an academic exercise. It is far more than that. It does not become more than an academic exercise, though, until we invite the Holy Spirit to join us, to work with us, to participate with us as we sit and look at the Word, study the Word, read the Word. You need to learn how to set aside time to be with the Holy Spirit. I know this might be new to you and it might be kind of strange, but just take time aside. Turn off the TV, turn off the, you know, the music, turn off everything, and just say, Holy Spirit, this is what I'm reading today. It might be Mark chapter 16, these verses we just read. You know, I, I've been looking at these verses. You, you know, Jesus said that these signs would follow them that believe. I'm not seeing them. Can you explain? Can you teach me? Can you guide me? And then just listen. One thing you have to understand in communicating with the Holy Spirit in our relationship with Him, it is spirit to spirit. He is communicating to us. We try too hard to receive from Him with our understanding. Communication is spirit to spirit. Sit and just release your faith. Believe that He is speaking to you. There are deposits going into your spirit. Regardless if your understanding is fruitful or not, He is depositing things. When you ask, when you sit, when you wait in His presence, He is depositing things in your spirit. This is hard when you first get started because you want to ha hear a voice. You want to hear, just like you hear are hearing my voice. You want to hear him talking. You want to listen. You want to, you know, have something that your understanding can comprehend. It doesn't always come like that. I remember when I was first learning about this. I was in a situation one time at work. And we're in a meeting and as I'm sitting there talking to people, there was a real bad situation at work, 
You know, we had an incident that needed to be addressed. And as I'm sitting there, these ideas started popping into my mind, into my understanding. They were things that were beyond my skill level at that point. The Holy Spirit was feeding me that information. So I asked him later on, why did you give me that information at that point without me asking it? He pointed me backwards to two, you know, to the times we had spent where I just sat listening. He showed me that two weeks before that, he had deposited those ideas into my spirit as I sat listening, waiting for him to teach me. He was teaching me. He was guiding me on how to address that incident. He was imparting wisdom but that wisdom did not hit my understanding until I was in those meetings and needed it. You see, the Holy Spirit was working. My understanding was unfruitful. It wasn't aware, but then in that meeting, I received revelation knowledge that had been deposited a couple of weeks before. And this is something you'll need to understand, friend. You're not always going to receive from him the minute you know, you're sitting there quietly in your understanding. But there will be times, even in ministry, there's times where I'll be ministering to, or talking to someone and these ideas are popping up. There are things that he's deposited. I've had times where I've had interpretations of things I prayed out in the spirit and tongues, you know, two or three months before. But I didn't get the interpretation when I prayed it out. But then as I'm in service, I'll get this utterance and the Holy Spirit will show me that was an interpretation of things you prayed out several months ago. We have to stop thinking in natural timelines because the Holy Spirit does not work in our linear time. He does not make a differentiation between the future, the present, the past as we do. So in your relationship with him, as you're sitting, listening, and talking to him, have faith that he is putting those deposits into your spirit so that when it is needed, you will be able to draw them out and they will be there for you. But again, if I had not been spending time quietly with the Holy Spirit on a day-by-day -day basis and just waited till I needed that meeting, I wouldn't have gotten those insights, would I? This is why it's so important for it to make it a continuous habit, a continuous exercise to set aside time to sit quietly with Him. I like to spend some time reading in the Word and then sit down and just talk it over with Him. But again, as I'm talking it over, explaining it to Him, you know, what I was reading, things like that. My understanding does not always receive the answer, but I've been doing this long enough and I have trust in the Holy Spirit that he is depositing the answers into my spirit. So when I need them, they will be there. Now, the problem though we have, and you probably have heard me say this, is our soul operates like a water pipe. If you have, you know, not been putting good things into that water pipe, it may have had a huge buildup of worldly sludge. I go back to Romans chapter 8 when I think about this. In verse 1 it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. There is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So, when we talk about walking out of the flesh, we're talking about our habits, our pattern of existence, the, the things we do on a daily basis. There's no condemnation of those who are on a daily basis not walking according to the flesh. When we're talking about the flesh, we're talking about the input of our five physical senses. There are many Christians who live under a cloud of condemnation because their focus is in the wrong place. They habitually operate according to the input of their five physical senses. And this is something that we're trained from childhood to do. We're trained to operate according to the world's rules. As, when you're growing up, if your tummy hurt, you know, your mom or dad might have given you medication. If your head hurt, they might have given you an aspirin. You know, a child, they have baby aspirin, they have child aspirin. They turned to medication. What were they doing? They were renewing your mind to be conformed to this world. We talk about being conformed to this world. We're talking about being pressed into a mold. They were pressing you into the mold of this world, which says, if my head hurts, 
I get an aspirin. If my tummy hurts, I get pepto -bismol. The world trains us through commercials, you know, but it, all the way from childhood, there's commercials, there are all kinds of things that we turn to the natural for healing when we need, you know, to be touched. We are not feeling well. We turn to a natural doctor. We turn to a natural medicine. The Christian is to live on a different plane. This does not mean that we just throw out the baby with the bathwater, you know, as the proverb goes, we do, may go to the doctor, but our focus is not on the doctor. Our focus is on the spirit and listening to him. If you skip down into the verse, into the chapter it says in verse five, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. When we're talking about this, to be spiritually minded, it is simple, friend, what that means. This is to be word minded. To be word minded is life and peace. To be non word minded is to be death. Now, we looked early on, and we've talked about this before in previous programs. In context of Scripture, when we're talking about life and death, the easiest way I like to think about it is connection to God. The born-again spirit has been connected to God and has access to the life of God. The unsaved spirit has been disconnected from God mm -hmm. and only manifests death. Death flows outward from the spirit into the soul and into the physical being. Now, we've seen in the previous program the works of the flesh, and we talked about that. If you are not feeding your soul with the Word of God, if you're not feeding your soul by spending time in fellowship with the Spirit, you will be turned towards the world's way of doing things, just like in that roundhouse. When the engine comes in, you can turn it towards life, or you can turn it towards death. The choice of focus is ours alone to make. One of the most dangerous things that you'll hear people say is, well, God is in control. In a sense, yes, he is sovereign, he is almighty, he is God, he is the creator of the universe. But in this physical realm, he is not in control. Adam and Eve, when they sinned, they turned the authority of this world over to Satan. That's why in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4, we see that Satan is the God, little g, of this world. And the little translation says the God of the sage. We've talked about this before. This age is rapidly coming to a close. But until this age comes to a close, God does not have the authority legally to override Satan. But he did create a loophole. He created a loophole where if he can find a man or a woman like you or I who will yield to the Spirit, who will turn the roundhouse to the Word of God, spend time in fellowship with the Word of God, and spend time in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, and that person will begin able to operate the authority of the name of Jesus in the natural realm. That is why a man or woman anointed by the Spirit is able to lay hands on the sick and they recover. That is why a man or woman anointed by the Spirit can raise the dead, can cleanse the lepers, cast out devils, because they are operating in the authority of the new creation realities within their spirit. These are not things we're waiting for. These are things that God has already given us. But again, our mindset determines our manifestation. Is our mind focused towards the world in the world's way of doing things? Or is our mindset focused towards the word in the word's way of doing things? That is the question each one of us need to ask for ourselves. What are we going to do with the authority God has given us? I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. I am filled with the life of God. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I have all things pertaining to life and godliness available to me through the knowledge of him. Where does that knowledge come? That knowledge comes from the word. In Proverbs chapter 18, and verse 21, it says, Life and death is in the power of the tongue. The power of life, the power of death, 
the power to connect to God's life, the power to disconnect from God's life is in our tongue. The things we are saying are a result of what's in our soul in abundance. When we are speaking, and I used to, when I looked at that verse, Proverbs 18, 21, when I looked at this in the past, I used to consider and think that what we were seeing there was, you know, confessing healing, confessing this and that. But I realized over the years there's much more to it than that. Yes, that is a part of it, making the right confession, so on and so forth. But your tongue is the tuning instrument. And I remember in music class when I was a child growing up, you know, the instructor sometimes would pull out a tuning fork. And they'd have the tuning fork and it would hum and it would enable them to tune the piano and so on and so forth. I remember being fascinated as a child watching when people come into school to tune the pianos with their tuning forks. We have a tuning fork for the spiritual realm. It is our tongue. Our tongue is the tuning fork that connects us to God's life or disconnects us from God's life. If we're disconnected, then we're open to death manifesting in our physical being and in our soul. I remember a few months ago, Carol and I were at a Bible study. There was a lady there talking about this anxiety and the worry and all, you know, she was just feeling depression. She wanted prayer. We got to talking to her. She had not opened the Bible for over weeks. You know, it was right after the incident in Israel when the war started, and she had just been sitting hour after hour. She was retired, just sitting hour after hour looking at the news headlines. Well, I didn't need to pray for her. Carol didn't need to pray for her because the anxiety, the dep- you know, the worry, everything she was experiencing was because of what she was feeding into her soul. Yes, we did pray for her. Yes, we did ask for the Holy Spirit to help her, but we didn't need to. What we needed to do and what we did do was turn our attention back to the Word of God. We told her to turn off the headlines. I understand the you know things are going on in the world. I understand the the temptation to want to be informed and not saying anything's wrong with being informed of what's going on. But you can go to an extreme in looking at this stuff, and that's what you need to be careful of, friend. God desires to bring you up to a high level. God desires to bring me up to a higher level. But we'll never come up to that higher level if we do not get our focus in the right place. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. The tongue is the tuning fork. We talked in previous programs, you know, about praying in, in tongues. And I think the Holy Spirit wants us to go back and review some of those things. I'm not going to necessarily say is tongues for today or not, because we just don't have time in the series. But in the next program, we're going to start talking about how do we use our tongue to pray in the Spirit to tune ourselves to the spiritual realm. Just lay some foundation for this. Let's turn over in the last few minutes of today's program to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And we're going to lay a a little bit of a foundation here. We're we're almost out of time. It starts in verse 17, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel not with wisdom and words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Notice he says the preaching of the cross is the power of God, but he gives a caveat to that. If you go back to the previous verse, he says, Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. The caveat is that it's we're to preach it not with the wisdom of words, because when we use our wisdom, when we go back to that acquired knowledge that I talked about at the beginning of the program, we are making the cross of no effect, which means we're rendering it powerless in our life. The message of the cross is something that can only be received by revelation. If you are not tuned into the spiritual realm, you will not be able to receive revelation. If you are only operating out of knowledge you acquired through study and hard work and effort, then you will be not able to access the power. The demonstrations and demonstrating of the the kingdom is not something that's going to happen in your life. When you look around and see the powerlessness of the church today, yes, we have services where some people are healed here or there, you know, it's a drip here or there, but operating in the power of 
that Jesus operated in, that the apostles operated in, that the early church operated in, will not happen if we are tuned to the world system and the world's way of doing things. But thankfully, God did not leave us on our own. He gave us a tuning fork, and he placed it in our mouth where we can tune ourselves to the Spirit. You can tune your soul to the Spirit. You can turn that engine from the world's way to the Spirit. But the choice is yours, and God's not going to make you do this. And that's why when I say this doctrine, God is in control, is so dangerous. Because it creates this attitude and this mindset, well, I just have to wait for God to move. But God has moved when he sent Jesus as a cross friend. We are not waiting for God to move because he has moved. He is waiting for us to move towards him. The question is, what choices will we make? Will we turn to him or will we not? Those are the choices that determine whether the message of the cross will be releasing the power of God in our life or releasing death. And you say, well, how can it release death? If you are operating out of your head and out of acquired knowledge versus out of the Spirit, you will be moving into religious tradition. Religious tradition leads to spiritual death and disconnection from God. Doesn't mean you lose your salvation. Just means that you will be disconnected from the power that is found in the message and that you will have nothing for Jesus to work with you to confirm his word. Well, friend, we're out of time. As we close out again today, I just want to remind you, Carolina, I love you. We pray for you. And we just want to encourage you once again that you can live your life walking by the Spirit in fullness of all that God has called you to as you access and walk by the faith of the Son of God.